15 years since okay. 1997. Yeah. You've been playing music in Tuscaloosa since 97, right? Yeah. Since 98. 98. That's right. I graduated high school in 97. I moved here in 98. I can't even remember the lineup for the first one. I really can't. I can remember the 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 ne'er-do-wells might have been, might have tried to play Bakwa played, but it but John Snowden wasn't there, so it was me with Bakwa, like me with Chris Eiler and, and Adam Pate, and I think we just did a whole bunch of uh, we did we did some covers. I don't know what we I, I can't remember what we played. Um, my man played, as, so it was just me with another bass player and a drummer, handbag being the seeds, three P's. had to fill up Friday and Saturday though so it wasn't as, as big of a deal and then when they passed the alcohol thing you could sell alcohol on Sundays we started that's been the last like three or four years I think we started playing on Sundays and it's just I mean you know things just got weird from there because you know you can you can play till three o'clock on Friday night but you can only play till two o'clock on Saturday night and you can only play till 9.30 on, on Sunday night. And the, uh, the publicity seems to be getting easier and easier as the years go on. It's been six years, the better part of a decade. Friday night is uh, is is uh, Elliot McPherson and uh, Craig Pickering, aka Sweet Dog, uh, who uh, were in the Dexa Teens, uh, are going to play with uh, with Lil Bo, Ronnie Lee Gibson on bass, um, and me. I know them from uh, well. I mean, I I, I really liked. Uh, I met Sweet Dog at a, at a at a music store that used to be in town called Decade Music. Um, and he uh, showed me their new record, uh, which was at the time Red Dust Rising, and it blew my mind. And they were immediately one of my favorite bands. 
because they really changed my perspective on music in general. It's kind of like a busy week, like in general, except it's all packed into that that one weekend, you know. Whew! It's like playing, like playing, you know, two gigs a day for several days. Like all the all the all the moving around and everything. It's just it's crazy. But it is it, it's it's a, it's it's like some kind of musical marathon, and I'm the only one who gets to do it. <laughs> I take a pill for my heartburn. I take a pill for cholesterol. Yeah, there have been a couple of nights um, over the last six of these that it's you know it's, it hasn't been a great night. But for the most part, there have been there have been supportive there have been supportive crowds there every night. For, cause, and I don't blame people for not coming to each night. Like people will tell me, I'm going to be there on Friday night, and you know why I'm only going to be there on Friday night. You know, like I like I, I completely get that. Oh no, I can't find a feel that keeps me from being ill every time I think about you. Josh Cavanaugh and Adam Ridgway are playing, um, uh, who are in Blaine Duncan and the Lookers. Blaine, uh, I used to be in that band, um, and Blaine and I are good friends, and he's one of my favorite songwriters. Uh, so, you know, getting a chance to play with him ever is a really good, is a really good thing for me. Cause it helps to pass the years. I'll take a pill. When I'm sick, I take a pill. When I feel good, I even got a pill set aside for special nights. Makes my dick as hard as wood. No, I can't find a pill that keeps me from being ill every time I think about you. Oh, no, I can't find a pill that keeps me from being ill every time I think about you. I don't think I've ever heard that one. I like Blaine. I, I like Blaine a lot, but he's just, he can tell a story and and not, like, he can tell, like, so many, so many lines of a story in between lines that he writes. There's so, there's so much in stuff that he leaves out. Like, it's incredible to me. I've never, I've never been able to, to write 
so little and say so much, you know. And he'll and he'll agonize over word choice. Like I I know him. He's he's just it, it blows my mind. I can I can, if if I write a song if it takes more than five minutes that song does not get written every time. And Blaine will agonize over just minutia. Is that your songwriting style? You just you just go at it. If, and it, if it's not good, you trash if it. If it if it comes and it and it if it comes and I'm near a pen and paper, then you know it it's. It's a you know chord structure, melody, words, everything, and it's all about five minutes and probably about thirty minutes of, of wrapping it up and tightening it up. But but the, the the meat of it will all be in between two to five minutes. And I don't write very often because yeah. it all has to be right there. Would have been hot weather, day or dark. Stakes in the limbs looking like a tree bark That preacher, he never really acted his age Things that he said I never would say Made the bed the morning of I never did cry, so I guess it was enough When I was gone there was a baptism When I was gone there was a baptism When I was gone there was a baptism Won't be a baptism today Water like a bath, there wasn't any breeze Would have been hard weather, day or dark Snakes in the limbs, looking like a tree bark That preacher, he never really acted his age Things that I heard, I never could say I made the bed the morning of Never did cry, but I guess it was enough When I was gone, there was a baptism When I was gone, there was a baptism When I was gone, there was a baptism won't be a baptism today When I was gone there was a baptism When I was gone there was a baptism When I was gone there was a baptism Won't be a baptism today When I was gone there was a baptism When I was gone there was a baptism When I was gone there was a baptism There won't be a baptism today When I was gone there was a baptism when I was gone, there was a baptism. When I was gone, there was a baptism. Won't be a baptism today. When I was gone, there was a baptism. 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 And it's just, it's, it's hard to get that many people in a small room. So if, if, if people are just going to go for one night, and some people do really do the whole run the gauntlet and hang out all weekend. And I'm amazed by that because as a, it's got to be as difficult as a spectator to watch that show as it is to, to play it. But <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's rough. You have to train to keep around. It's, I think that it's, it's more, like, I'm gonna, you know, I get the opportunity to play with a bunch of bands that I like, so I'm gonna do that. Um, but it also is one weekend, and it's every band, you know what I mean? And so by, like, I mean, I'm playing with the Dex teams this year. By the first 45 minutes, my brain is gonna be doing weird things, you know? Uh, like, it, it, it's, it's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be pretty chaotic in, in my, in my cranium. Come on, little mama, won't you take me, make me around back. Before your daddy gets home, baby, catch me on in the sugar shack. Cause when she was felt a little white teeth was from the head fire And the Golden Monica, do you know them? 
You know those guys? Yeah, I, I, I hang out with those guys a, a good bit. Caleb yeah. and Ronnie and uh, uh, Chase and Matt. Matt Wortley, yeah. Yeah. Matt Wortley was once upon a time in a, in a band called Lee Baines and the Glory Fires. Their, their uh, first record on Sub Pop just came out. Or is about to come out. And they're out playing, you know, they're playing like the dirty shows that, that you know, the Dex teams used to play back in the day. But like they're, you know, they're they're playing the they're playing the dirty, dirty shows like wherever they can. And you know, it kind of peters out every once in a while. And they're not doing something for a few months. And the Golden Monica is a really good rock band, and they're they're they could they could very easily be doing what. <laughs> They're, they could very easily be doing what, you know, Lee's do. You know? Now tell me it's falling and everybody is sleeping in their bed. Simple little cage bird, she's singing on out a lonely song. Standing all on his two paws. He don't know chain all the If you want it, it's out there. I mean there's a there's there's a whole bunch of rock and roll rooms that want rock and roll and there's not a whole lot of people playing it right now. You know? And I think it it might have something to do with like that, you know, coffee shop Americana mentality, but I mean rock and roll will be right back. Like it's there'll be a crowd for a rock band, a good rock band, like as soon as it as, as, as soon as it comes back around. Because people like people never stop liking rock and roll. They'll like that trendy stuff or you know those little things that pop up, but they'll like it every once in a while. They'll like it as it comes, but you know rock and roll will come back and it'll be it'll be loud and wild again. And everybody everybody will have a good time. I'll fight back fear. One day she's gonna wake up How me say it's too much to bear
they're encouraging that here? Do what? Do you think they're encouraging that kind of music, musical culture? Here? I think when you go to when you go to, I mean, you you want people to do what they what they want to do, but I mean, there were little there were little offshoot genre offshoots of rock and roll a few years ago, like emo and screamo and stuff like that. And when people show up to your open mic and they're and they're like, they're like, hey, we're in a we're in a screamo band. Can we play? Yeah, you can play. You're not. I mean, you're not going to be doing it for long. Like you're going to be. You're you're going to be in that screamo band. You're going to be in that screamo band for you know 20 minutes, and then y'all are going to start playing Rolling Stones covers, and you're gonna you're gonna realize that you know you are putting on airs for some reason because it's not a real thing. There's rock and roll. There's like you know groovy bluesy R and B stuff, uh, and there's country. And that's about as far as the in folk music, and that's about as far as the genres distinct will distinct distinguish themselves. And you know, for in contemporary music, for the next like hundred years or so, nobody's. I mean, electronic music will start doing something, but I mean, there's no like a lot of stuff like that. There's no person, you know. It's starting to become more and more organic, but you know, there's no there's no there's no person like performing, you know. I think people will like that as long as, you know, I think people will like that just like they like rap. Um, God, I forgot. I feel I sound like such a dickhead now. I forgot to say rap. Everybody. Gets a party. I said, I said, Bluesy R and B stuff, rock and roll, country, rap is clearly a genre in and of itself, uh, and and uh, that that electronic stuff. It's it's EDM, right? This groove is Charlie. And I know what to do if you ain't gonna move tonight. Been, that's me. That's me. That's me. Da, 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 da. That's what he's saying. He's just over there saying da, da. 